Welcome to the Structure Editor tutorial. We'll start with the basic controls, cover some structure concepts, then review all the buttons. Let's load a built-in structure to start. Select Structure Building Basic 1, then press Escape to close the list. Press F to focus selection. This centers the camera on the structure when nothing is selected. Right mouse button rotates the camera, and mouse wheel zooms in and out. Click on a block to select it. Click and drag to select multiple blocks. Hold down Shift while dragging to add to your selection, or toggle the selection while clicking. Select the two blocks on top, and press W to make sure we're in move mode. Click and hold on the tall blue handle, then drag the mouse up to move the blocks. Press Z to undo the last action, then Shift Z to redo it. Notice the shortcut keys are listed when you highlight over a button. Press E to rotate, then use the three disks to rotate the selection in 45 degree increments. Hold Shift to rotate in smaller increments. Press R to scale. Scaling only affects the size of the blocks, not their position. Select one of the blocks, then use the six small handles to adjust the shape and size. If you have multiple blocks selected, they will all be affected by resizing. Duplicate a block by pressing Shift D. It looks like nothing happened, but the new copy is identical to the old one. Hold Q, and you can move the selection along the closest standard axis based on your camera angle. Hold Shift plus Q to move with the grid size at half normal. The grid size defaults to half a meter. Left and right bracket change the grid size. Now let's take a look at block properties. Each block can be one of five materials, concrete, steel, rock, wood, or glass. Steel is the toughest material, while concrete is moderately strong, and the rest break fairly easily. The larger a block is, the harder it is to destroy. When building a structure, blocks connect to other touching blocks automatically. Control L lets you see the links for a structure. Links are generated when you save the structure, push the Update Links button, or turn on the link visibility. So far, we've only looked at normal blocks, but there's another kind, decals. Press D to turn a block into a decal. Decals attach to the closest normal block, when a normal block is destroyed, attached decals are released. Before they break off, decals have no collision. Decals are generally used for small details. Finally, there's a special variant of decals, wedges. All wedges have the same triangular shape, but the position of the pinched end can be adjusted. Use the skew slider to turn a decal into a wedge or use Ctrl plus W to toggle the skew value between none, zero, and one. Wedges are similar to decals. They don't break into smaller pieces and are attached to blocks, but they do have collision while still attached to their parent. To make it easier to reorient a wedge, use the buttons under relative orientation. You may notice a small arrow in the middle of a block. The arrow points towards positive Z, the small line points towards positive Y. There are two ways to extrude a new block from an existing one. The standard way is to highlight a side handle and press Shift E. This creates a new block and extrudes it from the selected side. The other way is specific to wedges. Notice the orange number one and pink number two corresponding to the pink and orange sides of the wedge. If you press Shift one or Shift two, you'll extrude a new block from that side of the wedge. You can combine normal and wedge extrudes to create a curved surface. Wedges take a little while to master, but they are critical for making angled or curved structures. A couple more things about blocks. Blocks can be painted one of 10 colors. Concrete blocks show the most color, while glass cannot be painted. The island you're on determines the colors available. To see a different palette, Switch to the Island Editor, edit the colors, then return to Structure Editing. Add a joint to a normal block with J, and cycle the side the joint is on by pressing J again. Each block can have one joint while a structure can have eight total joints. 
Joints are used as attach points for ropes or to create multi-piece structures with physics. To try out your structure and destruction, press spacebar. The left mouse button creates a small explosion. Hold the button to charge up a larger explosion. Press spacebar again to return to editing. Time to review the rest of the interface. The text box is the file name of the current structure. Push the small button to toggle the ability to edit the name. Quick Wedge Fix is for structures built with a previous version of the game. Save Custom lets you save a structure locally. Files are saved in your save folder and the structure subfolder. Workshop Upload opens the Workshop Uploading dialog. Push back quote to update the thumbnail. Select some tags and enter a description. Then push Upload New to add a new structure to the workshop. The Update button lets you change the details of an existing workshop structure. You'll need to push a different button to enable Update mode, but we'll get to that. New structure clears and resets everything. Load Custom works like Load Built-in. Browse Workshop lets you look in the workshop. Use the tags or filters, then press Search. Select a structure, push Subscribe, then once it's downloaded, press Load Structure. If you're the creator, you can push Enable Update to allow you to update a structure when uploading. Undo and Redo we've covered. Select All and Invert Selection work as expected. Select Connected selects all blocks connected to your current selection. Select Same Material selects all blocks of the same material type. Delete Selected works as expected. Added Mouse creates a one-by-one -one block at the cursor. Duplicate has been covered. Copy stores a copy of the selection in a buffer. Paste creates the blocks in the copy buffer. Use copy and paste to copy blocks between existing structures. The three mirror buttons affect the current selection, and they do not create a copy. Rotate Y rotates the selection around the central Y axis by 90 degrees. Center All moves all blocks so the structure's bounding box is centered. Show Footprint toggles the rendering of the red outline. This outline is the shape used for destruction objectives in the game. Update Footprint creates the footprint shape based on the blocks that touch the ground. Remove All Joints does what it says. Move, Rotate and Scale we've covered. The Customization section lets you change editor behavior and some display options. The Select toggle changes how blocks are highlighted when you drag Select. Center changes where the editing handles appear. Aligners are the small gray lines that highlight the last selected block. Outline toggles the bounding box display for blocks. Orientation toggles the small orientation arrows. Handle affects the size of the editing handles. Cam toggles between normal, which orbits a center point, and free, which controls the camera directly. Focus selection centers the camera on the selected blocks. The field of view can be changed with F3 and F4. View switches between the standard view and three orthographic views. You can toggle block and decal visibility, with outline meaning visible but not clickable. Links we've covered, and the select all buttons do what you expect. Each material type can have their rendering disabled. The bridge checkbox changes a couple things. The structure collapses less often. Blocks fully under the ground are removed before gameplay starts, and destruction objectives are easier to complete. Material shows the last selected block's material, while toggling it affects all selected blocks. All the current block details have been covered except partial. Partial makes a normal block have a 50% chance of being instantly removed before gameplay starts. This is useful for making multiple structures appear partially complete without having to create multiple copies of the structure. Reset Rotation affects all selected blocks. Relative orientation controls were covered with wedges. Potential Structure Issues checks your structure for a variety of problems. Overlapping selects any blocks that are directly on top of each other, something that can happen with duplicate or copy-paste. Intersecting is similar. It selects blocks that will collide with each other when they break off, though it ignores wedge blocks. Non-standard blocks selects blocks that may not destroy nicely due to being odd sizes. 
Invalid decal selects any decals that aren't touching a block and will not be present during gameplay. Test destruction we've covered while Editor Hub exits the Structure Editor. Congratulations on making it to the end of the Structure Editor tutorial. This tutorial was made with an early version of the game, so some things may have changed by the time you watch this. Look for more editor tutorials coming soon.